So the point of today's video is to show you why masks are so important when it comes to editing your photographs because it really does take you from an amateur look to a professional look and as always I've left it far too late in the day I'm rushing about and I reckon I've probably got about seven minutes of daylight left before the sun disappears over the hill but have a look at this What about that? Look! How good is that? We have about five minutes. Let's see what we can do. The sun is about to come out from underneath the clouds and if we're lucky, we might get some colour. If not, we're still going to take a great photograph and then we're going to take it back and I'll show you how to edit using masks. Let's do it. Let me bring you with me. You're too far away. Let's go in this little outcrop and let's see if we can't get something good. The lens we're using is a 15 to 35 and we're going ultra wide and again the good thing about using that is we'll get the whole sky in. There is a boat on the horizon there but it might be a little bit too small in the screen. But because there's no foreground here what I'm going to try and do is get low like I've been telling you and use some of the rocks and the seaweed which hopefully will light up with that sun coming down and give you a nice interesting foreground. Let's give it a go. Right, we're going to try and shut this one down to F16 and see if we can get some good old sun stars in. Those clouds are unbelievable. We've even got some... We've even got some sea foam coming in, which again is just adding a little bit of interest to the shot. Can you see me? Hello! Oh, there's birds and everything flying about. Oh, this is fabulous. I don't know if my shaking hands is going to introduce any wobble, but... The good thing about shooting into sunsets at this time of night is you don't really need to go on a tripod because you can get fast enough. Here comes the rain and as you know the Osmo Pocket 3 doesn't like the rain so this might come to an end soon. <laughs> this is fantastic. I'm going to have to put you away because you're going to get soaking wet and I can't afford a new one. So apologies for the noise, it's incredibly windy. There's a storm brewing by the looks of things. But the sun's now behind that cloud on the horizon and that's going to make a good shot as well. And that's what's great about a wide angle lens for this. Because the distortion when you're at your widest angle really makes the clouds look as if they're racing across the sky. It's just wonderful. I tell you what, it was worth hours drive just to come for these couple of shots. We might have only been here for five minutes, but this is what makes and breaks landscape photography. Being there when it happens. It hasn't looked like it was going to do it all day and then right at the last minute the sun popped out. This is a very happy boy. I think we'll call it a day there. With the battery and the microphone about to run out I'm going to take that back to the car but I'm going to sit about because blue hours coming next and you never know. But I do believe we've got some photographs that we can take back to Lightroom and I'll show you how to make them pop using masks. Let's go! Okay, so we're back in the studio. Yesterday was an absolutely stunning day, as you saw. But I must admit, now that I'm back in the studio, some of the photographs that I've got didn't turn out quite the way I was hoping. But the good news is, we've got one or two that we can definitely work on today to show you masks. Now, here's the photograph that we're going to work on. Now, as you can see, I've taken it from this all the way through to this. And that's just by using some global adjustments, but mainly using masks. So let's dig in and see how I did it. So this is how you might normally use masks. You go into your photograph, you go up to the ones at the top that are already set for you, sky, subject and background. So if I choose the sky, it's selected, brilliant. And we might want to add a little bit of dehaze, bring some drama in there. We might want to bring the highlights down a little bit, increase that drama even more. We might want to play with the white balance and that's pretty much good for the sky. Now we want to work in the foreground. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can do this and I'm going to select another sky mask I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to choose to invert that and everything other than the sky is now selected and I might want to bring the highlights down a little bit again on that I might want to raise the shadows to bring a little bit of detail back in in the beach and again I might want to increase the saturation a little bit in there and bring some of the whites up 
For most of us, we might already be there, but let's just go in and add a post crop vignette just to draw your eye into the middle. Job's done. Or is it? Let's reset that and start again. So again, I will do the same basic adjustments. Again, I will follow the same step. I'm going to choose the sky and I'm going to bring the highlights down in the sky. I'm going to bring the shadows down a little bit and then I'm going to increase the haze a touch. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the temperature ever so slightly on that. Saturation I can now bring up a little bit because there's more colour in there. And that to me is looking a lot better. So let's go to our next mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a linear gradient mask in. So we choose a linear gradient. I'm going to select the foreground and draw all the way up. And if you hold in the shift key, it comes up in a straight line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to take the highlights down a touch. And this time I'm going to raise the clarity a touch because I want as much detail right at the front of the image as possible. So are we done? Not even started yet. So the main focus of this image for me was the sun rays coming through right in the middle of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a radial gradient. So I'm going to start in the middle of the sun. I'm going to pull it out to something like that. And now what I can do is I can increase the exposure in there just to bring a bit more of your eye in there. I'm going to bring up the contrast a little bit to try and highlight some of those rays that are in there. And again, if I want to just add a little bit of warmth and with dehaze, I can actually go the other way and just add a little bit of glow to that. So with that on and off, you can see what that's doing to the image. So for me, there are two main things that draw your eye in this image and that's the clouds and that's the foreground. So let's start with the clouds because that's the obvious one. And if you've watched my video on dodging and burning, this is going to make a lot of sense. And if you haven't, I would recommend you watch it after this one. So I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to select brush. I'm going to raise the exposure on this brush a little bit and I'm going to raise the whites. And what I'm going to try and do here is bring out the parts of the clouds that have whites in them. So you can see here, if I just go along this line of cloud there, I can start to make that stand out a little bit. And that's starting to look good. Now, you might not see much of a difference there, but again, if I had changed the amount and push that all the way up, you can see what that's doing. But again, a great habit to get into when you're using your masks is keep turning them on and off. So that's it with it on, that's it with it off. So I still feel the foreground's a little bit too bright, not a lot of detail in there. So I'm going to use the landscape masks that Lightroom has built in. So if you go in and choose select landscape, it will detect your image and then it will give you several things that you can now choose to mask automatically. So I'm looking for the water and the natural ground. I can either create them as two separate masks, but I don't want to. I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to create that one big mask. So again, I'm going to bring the highlights down on this. I'm going to bring the exposure down a touch on this as well. Don't worry if this looks a little bit dark at the moment because we're going to bring it back shortly. So we now have another mask that we can play with. Now what I like in this image is the whites of the waves. We've got the whites all around the front here and there's some over in the background, but you can't really see them. So let's try and bring them out a little bit. So I'm going to go for another radial mask. And I'm going to just draw it round about here and I'm going to position it just over those white waves. I'm going to raise the exposure a little bit and I'm also going to raise the temperature because we're losing a little bit of the colour there. And now we've got a little bit of a glow over the top of those white waves. I'm going to have a look at this froth in the sea here. So we're going to go back and we're going to do another dodge brush, create a mask, brush, increase the exposure increase the whites. I'm pushing out quite a bit because you can always draw it back when you're done. The size of the brush looks okay for the edges here and I'm just literally going to paint over the froth here. I'm going to increase the size of the brush here. And if you ever want to see where you're actually building a mask, if you hold down O, it will show you in whatever colour you've got. Mine's is red. So I know that I'm hitting the right areas. 
So I'm just going to continue over here. So again, I'm going to push the amount up so you can see. I'm going to push the exposure up a little touch more, quite like that. So now you can really start to see the difference. Again, if I put the mask off, dull, flat, and now I can actually go back and just touch on areas where I think it's missed. And now that I've got this mask again on and off, it's quite brutal. But before I change that, it was a warm night, so I'm going to introduce a little bit of that sun warmth by increasing the temperature. And that's what's great about masks, is you can have local adjustments for things like white balance and sharpness. And one other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring down the clarity on this one because I want to have that kind of dreamy-like feeling of movement in the water there. So again, let's have another wee look on, off. It's getting there. So let's bring the amount down a little touch till we're happy with it. And that's all looking good now. One other thing that I've noticed is the sky, whilst it was very warm, there was a lot of blue sky out there and the sky had a lot of blue in it. So I'm going to go back to my sky mask, first one we did. I'm going to increase the saturation a touch on that. And what you can see is it's starting to push the yellows and not just the blues. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to just change the hue a little bit. Make it a little bit warmer, a little bit more orange. Bring that saturation up a touch. I'm going to come out of the mask at the moment. I'm going to go to my colour mixer because now I can target individual colours and I really want to try and target the blues up in this area here. So I'll go into my saturation panel, I'm going to go to the colours that I want to enhance, click on it and then I can push up to add and I can pull down to take away. And again, I'm going to just check in my mask here for the sky mask. I think if we push the dehaze a little bit more, I can bring some more drama and some more blueness in there. So what's missing here now is the sky is not being reflected in the lower half of the image. So you have to be mindful of that. Okay, so this time I want a mask for just the water. So I'm going to go to select landscape and this time I'm going to pick just the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and mirror what I'm seeing in the sky in the water. So it's slightly warmer, so I'm going to push it to a more golden tone. So I'm happy with that just now, but there was definitely some blue in that water. So let's create one more mask, a brush, and we're going to put some saturation on this. I'm going to paint over the bits that weren't overly white and the bits that I want to try and reflect that blueness in the sky. And again, as before, if I now start playing about with the temperature slider, I can start to bring some blue back into that. I'm going to raise the highlights a touch, a little bit on the exposure, and I'm going to play about with the hue just to get it right. So we have went from having almost a black and white sea to having a warm golden tone with some darker blue areas. So all that's left now is to start looking at this foreground. So this time I'm just going to use a brush. I'm going to select quite a big brush and I'm just going to paint all over the top of that. And again, I'm just going to play about with the exposure. Let's bring that up. Clarity, I'm going to maybe bring that up a touch just to bring a bit of sharpness into that area. And again, the temperature is a little bit cold, so let's warm that up to match the rest of the image. We're getting there. That's starting to look good. And I'm going to push the shadows a little bit on that as well. So that's us almost there. Now, we've already done this trick, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to create a brush. I'm going to ex increase the exposure. And this time I'm going to shrink my brush all the way down. And what I really want to do is bring life to these waves out here. What's happening here is I'm not overly happy with this area here. I'm going to finish off with another radial gradient. I'm just going to take it in there. I'm going to raise the exposure. Bit of contrast again just to bring it back. And this time I'm going to drop the temperature a little bit. Okay, so now we've got the whole image. You might be thinking, yeah, I quite like that. You might want to just put a vignette on it. But this time I'm going to have a quick look at it. I still feel as if there's not enough to draw me into the middle of the image. So we're going to fix that now. And I'm going to create a big radial gradient right from the middle here out to about there. And again, this time I'm going to invert it, the invert effect slider. And now I'm going to slowly bring the exposure down until I feel it's about right. That's looking good. I'm going to raise the blacks just a touch. 
around the edges so we don't lose that detail. So back to the basic slider, I still feel the colours are a little bit muted just now so I'm going to just play about with the saturation slider. So I'm just going to have a look now, I feel that we've lost a little bit of the whiteness in this front bit. So again, back to my masks. You should name them, but I know it's mask number seven. And this time I'm going to cool it down a little bit. Take that warmth out of there. I'm going to raise the whites a touch. And I'm going to raise the highlights a touch. And if you did want to add a final vignette just to the corners, very subtly, then we start to get to that. So there you go, it's a longer video than usual, but masking is very in-depth and we've really only scratched the surface here. This is how I use it and a very basic way to bring out the most in my photographs. So I hope you find something useful that you can use the next time you're editing. And as I've already mentioned, I've made a video about dodging and burning and if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, then I'd watch this video here. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.